Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Slash6870 here back at it again with another PC build guide for you today. What I have here is a ridiculous overkill build. This is a $2,000 build. I'm gonna keep making these builds. I'm gonna go $3,000 build next and maybe a $5,000 build and then I'm gonna start back up again with the budget PC build guides. It is pretty fun to look at these overkill builds though and maybe dream every once in a while because this thing, I mean $2,000, there aren't going to be that many people out there who are willing to spend $2,000 on a gaming PC, but I don't know, it's always interesting to put these type of builds together and to just look at it and see how much performance you're going to get for $2,000 US dollars, so let's get right into it. For the CPU, I went with an Intel Core i7-5930K. This is the next step up from the 5920K, which I had in my last build. This thing is clocked at 3.5 GHz, it is a 6 core CPU in case you don't know, and it's a socket 2011 CPU, but overall it's very good, and for $550 it's definitely pricey, but you are paying for performance, this thing is crazy fast. Next up for the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte GAX99 SLI, this thing is ridiculous. It holds up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, and it supports DDR4 up to 3,333 megahertz. Supports 4-way SLI, Crossfire support, like I said, uh, 8 SATA 6 gigabyte ports, 1 SATA Express, and uh, obviously for a motherboard this price, you're going to get onboard USB 3.0. This thing is huge, it's a full-size ATX, it's going to hold all kinds of graphics cards if you want to SLI in the future, and 128 gigabytes of RAM is ridiculous. Next up for the RAM, I went with the Kingston HyperX Fury Black 16 gigabyte 2 8 gigabyte stick kit. It's DDR4 collected 2133 megahertz, and I went with two of these, so a total of 32 gigabytes of this Kingston HyperX RAM. Uh, for $130, it's pretty cheap for 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is some of the cheaper DDR4 you can get right now. So, like I said, only $130, you're gonna get a lot of RAM. And if you're into video editing or any type of rendering, this thing, uh, this RAM DDR4 is gonna help you do that very, very quickly. DDR4 is just very fast and. Uh, overall, it's the future, and as far as gaming, games in the future might start taking advantage of it more so, and overall, with 32 gigabytes of this stuff, you can't go wrong. For the storage, I went with an HDD-SSD combination. For the hard drive, I went with a Seagate Barracuda 3TB 7200 RPM hard drive. Uh, nowadays, with file sizes, a 2 or 3 or even 4TB hard drive is optimal. 3TB is going to do you just fine for all your games and photos and videos and that kind of stuff. And I also went with an SSD, I got the Samsung 850 Pro 256GB SSD. 256GB is a good amount of SSD storage, you can store your OS as well as a good amount of your favorite programs. For the video card, the most important part, I went with an EVGA GeForce GTX 980 Ti. It's a 6GB video card and currently it is the best high-end video card for the money right now. Uh, GTX Titan X is technically more powerful, but it's a lot more expensive than this 980 Ti right here, which is only $650, and overall, for the money, it is the best high-end video card that you can get. This thing will play uh, pretty much anything in 1440p ultra, and you can dabble into some lower-end games at a 4K resolution, but if you want to play any, like, AAA title games in 4K, you might want to step it up to 2-way or even 3-way SLI. For the case, I want a Fractal Design R4, it has a window, ATX mid-tower case, it's $110, looks great, kinda simplistic, but I'm really into that. This thing has tons of cable management room, tons of airflow, and overall, the aesthetically, I really do enjoy it. I like the window design it has in here, and you're gonna be able to see everything going on. Uh, it uses high quality materials, this thing's gonna be solid, it's gonna look solid, and it's gonna uh, keep your parts nice and cool with the airflow and cable management options you have with it. Uh, finally, the power supply with an EVGA 850 80 plus gold certified fully modular power supply. With a fully modular power supply, you're gonna be able to use 
uh, your power cores as you see fit, which is going to save a lot of room as far as cable management is concerned. It's gold certified, so it's going to be very efficient, and 850 watts is a ton for a build like this. It's only 100, it's under $100 after a mail-in rebate. It comes out to $99, and for $99, you are getting one heck of a power supply with this thing. And EVGA is renowned for their great power supplies. So that's going to wrap up this $2,000 build. So I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to leave a like rating, and be sure to subscribe, because we're almost there. We're almost to 3,000 subscribers. And be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions or anything like that. And once again, I hope you all enjoyed. Have a good evening. Peace.